Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to resize images using GIMP 2.10. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the web browser. I recently built this website for one of my clients and um, really I'm taking you to this website because I want to show you that when we resize images, we need to understand what is the target size. It's quite important. So I'm going to show you two different examples. So let's click on this picture here, for example. And inside we've got this image and we've got this nice little article about supplementing your income by making money online, right? And it's this particular picture I want to replace as an example. So I'm just going to right click on that picture and I'm going to open the image in a new tab. So when I open that image in a new tab, I can see the image here. And what I'll do is just drag and drop that into this folder. Let's drag and drop it. The reason I'm doing that is I want to know exactly what is the size of this image. So I can now right click on it go to properties, go to details, and I know that it needs to be 960. So it'll be 960 pixels by 425. So it's important to understand the target file size before you go ahead and resize an image. So let's go over to Unsplash, and I've got this picture here. So it's like these students doing some work or doing something. And we're gonna use that picture and replace this particular one here. So we'll click, go to Unsplash. I'll put a link to this image in the YouTube description if you want to follow this, this update or this, uh, this edit. And we'll click the download button. So let's go ahead and open up this folder and we'll drag and drop this picture into here. <clears throat> okay, so let's open up GIMP software. So I'm using the latest version of GIMP. Let's go to File and New. And we, if we remember, we wanted the image to be 960 pixels wide and the height, we want it to be 425. We're going to click on advance and make sure we set the resolution here to 72. If you're doing print work, you should set it to 300 or 600 DPI. But if you're doing web stuff, 72 DPI should be fine. And the fill with background, we're going to set it to transparent. And we're going to click OK. So now we've got an image exactly the same size as our target size. That's quite important, right? So knowing the width and the height is very, very important before you resize, it, resize an image. So let's go ahead and um, open up this folder. And we've got the original image here and we've got this new one. So let's drag and drop that into GIMP. So when we drag and drop that picture, we'll hold down the control key and zoom out. We can see this yellow dot. This yellow dot represents the actual size of the image. And this little square in the middle here or this rectangle represents our target size for the resize. Now the problem is we need to be able to see that target size while we're resizing. So we're going to set the opacity to 50%, 50% here. So around 50%. We'll click on this top layer, the top one, and we'll go to the tool here. We'll hold down the left mouse button and click scale. Then we'll click anywhere up here and we'll see the handles appear. And as we're resizing inwards, we can hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom in. We can see the little dotted boxes in the background. That's our, that's our target size, right? So we know we can resize it a bit more. And we're going to cut the top of this lady's head off. So we're going to click on this middle box in the middle and we're going to drag it down a little bit to somewhere around here. I think this is going to be pretty good. Let's click scale and now we can see it's scaled and we're going to set the opacity. Let's just set our opacity all the way back up to the top. Now we can see the image. We can click on the move tool and we can move that picture around and now we've scaled it correctly, right? And I think around just around here should be pretty good. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to manipulate the the positioning as well and hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and hold down the middle mouse button to pan the canvas so i think this was going to be pretty good let's go to file export as and we're going to export it as a jpeg so we're going to click on select by file type and we're going to select jpeg here and we'll go to my desktop and we'll go to this folder here and we're going to save it in here so i'm going to click on the original image and i'm going to put a 02 at the end is going to be a new file and we'll click export and we'll leave it at 90% compression and click export let's minimize this so now we've got these two images we've got the original one and now we've got this new version now if we look at them <clears throat> we can see uh, when we roll over with the mouse or if we look in the bottom corner down here it's 70 kilobytes if we look at this new one it's 111 kilobytes so we want to compress this before we add it to the website so compression is quite important when you're doing web work as well so let's go ahead and open up the web browser i'm going to go to this website i'll put a link to it in the youtube description it's called jpeg compress and we're going to take that image and drag and drop it into this box here it's going to compress it the best it can for our work so we click download now and it's compressed it by 32 percent 
let's just drag this to the side and we'll drag and drop this new version into here. So it's got a dash min at the end of it. Now this file is 76.3 kilobytes and the original one that we created was 111. We'll delete this one and we'll keep the compressed version and we're just going to rename it. So we'll click here and get rid of this min at the end. So let's go and add that to the website and see what it looks like. Let's go to here. We need to find this article, right? So let's click this, copy this text here. We'll go into the new section here. Let's find that particular article. We'll edit it and we will expand this. Let's click on this picture and then go to the picture tool here and we'll browse on the server and then we'll go to articles. Let's go choose file and let's go back to the desktop and we'll find our <clears throat> GIMP tutorial folder and we'll select that image, click open and then click upload. So that image was called supplement. So it'll be under the letter S, let's find that. <clears throat> That's that picture right there, right? So let's select it and click select and we'll click OK. And now we can see the new image and it's compressed correctly. So we've not only resized it, but I've shown you how to compress it. Let's save it and we'll go back to the website and refresh. And there's our picture. But we did we did one mistake. Let's go back and edit it one more time. And we'll double click on this picture and we'll get rid of the width and height here. Let's delete the width and height. Click OK and save it. And you can see it's a bit distorted and when we refresh it will be at its correct perspective the reason we deleted the width and height is then it will resize correctly and scale correctly for mobile and for desktop so that's one good example of resizing an image i know it was a bit of a long explanation but if you're not understanding the target file size then it's going to be very difficult for you to create an image to the exact pixel that's what we're trying to do here today create images for web so if you want to create this image here, you'll know that you need to go and find out its size, right? So you right click on it, you open it in a new window and at the top here, it tells you 300 by 250. So you know the size that you're targeting, very important. Let's minimize this and so let's look at one more example. I'm going to minimize everything, right click on my desktop and go to um, display settings. And in display settings, you can see my monitor resolution as default is set to 1920 by 1080. So let's make a new desktop background. So let's go back to GIMP. Let's create a new uh, project and we're going to create this at 1920 by 1080. And we'll click on the advanced options. We can leave it at 72 DPI. Fill background with transparency and click OK. So we've got a new canvas that's the same size as my desktop background. So let's go and open up the web browser again and we'll go to this other picture and I want to use that as my desktop background this nice sports car it looks pretty cool so let's click the download button I'll put a link to this image in the YouTube description as well and we'll go to the folder and we we'll drag and drop that picture into uh, this folder here and let's open up GIMP and then we'll drag and drop that picture into GIMP here so let's hold down the control key again and zoom out we can see the dotted line represents so I'm do that. The dotted line represents the size of the image. We want to scale it so we can just press shift and S or we can click on the scale tool here. Or you can go to tools, uh, let's see, transform and scale, right? Shift and S. So we'll click um, shift S and we want to reduce the opacity so we can see the dotted boxes uh, for the canvas size and we're going to resize it. Let's hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom in. And we can scale it a little bit more, but we don't want to go too far, right? Let's click scale. And that looks pretty good to me. So let's just increase the opacity. And now you can see what the image is looking like. You can click on the move tool and move it up or down a little bit. But you don't want to move it off the canvas. You don't want to see these dotted boxes, right? We want to cover the canvas. So I think about here, maybe up a little bit around here. So the car is kind of in the midpoint. Let's bring it up a little bit more. Use the arrows on your keyboard to move the image up and down and hold down the shift key to move them on larger increments i think that's pretty good let's go to file let's go to export as and this time we will it's in the correct folder so let's just call this desktop background <coughs> dash zero one and we're going to click export but this time we'll set it to 100% compression because we don't need to compress for our desktop background we can just leave it as 100% so it would be the best quality possible let's click export let's minimize GIMP let's minimize this browser window and <clears throat> here we can see the desktop background image so let's add that to my 
background here that's basically how I'm creating these backgrounds with DCP right this background that you see here at present all I've done is created the, the size and then I've written my text and my logo using GIMP maybe I'll show you a separate tutorial on how to do that but let's go to this folder let's right click on the picture so we right click on this picture and we'll go to set as desktop background let's close this and now you can see that as my desktop background so that's quickly how to create desktop backgrounds as well that's a little bonus tutorial for you as well so that's how you go about finding the correct size for an image for whether it's for web or for your desktop background or for anything basically as long as you've got that image somewhere in a folder somewhere just right click on it go to its properties go to details and it will tell you the exact width and height so when you go to create your next image you'll know the target size for the width and height that's very important so i hope you find this tutorial useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp web tutorial